What's up YouTube? I'm just goofing off in the office here playing with a tiny little USB scientific camera and our objective here is to see how short we can get this focal distance uh, or if we were going to put it into a package how close can we get this to our sample and still get a reasonably decent image so just want to show you how I ripped it apart how you can adjust the focal length of these cameras and also most web cameras are exactly the same, most webcams. Um, and then a little bit about playing with the software and things on how, or examples on how much distortion you get at different uh, focal distances. So let's get into it, be a quick video. So this is the setup that I'm using to sort of gauge how much I can tweak this lens in here before my focal plane turns into a focal sphere. I mean it's always a sphere but if the sphere is large enough then within the region of interest you can kind of approximate it to be flat but with small lenses you really have to be careful with uh, sort of that sphere is sort of around the sensor here. So the closer you get to the optics and the sensor, the more your focal plane really turns into a sphere. But when you're imaging planar objects like PCBs and things like that, um, you, you really kind of have to be careful. So this micro eye XS camera came out of the box with a focal distance of about 100 millimeters and in the software I think it's at 112 but that's from the front of the camera here to your object right so so from the face of the camera to the object well we want to put it into a box where the we want the distance to be measured from the back of the camera to the front of the object and we want that entire thing to be less than a couple inches so out of the box with 100, it's not a bad starting point. And with these small optics, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever taken a, a webcam apart, but you can, there's a lens in there that you can unscrew. But again, the problem becomes, the more you take it off that design point, the more distortion you're gonna get. So all I'm doing to kind of gauge that is when I tweak the, the optic in there, I just sort of, even by hand, clamp it to my uh, little motion system here I put the object in and kind of get it aligned more or less on the screen and then I tweak the focus with uh, with my fine micrometer here and then what I can do is when I capture the image you know I can take a set of calipers guestimeters and come off the back of the thing to the front and kind of get a, a example of working distance but then once I capture that image, I'll go back in and look at my pitch, look at how well the focus is around the peripheral of the image, and you know, and then gauge kind of what my distortion is. So let me tear this thing apart, and I'll show you what's inside it and how I can, how I tweaked the uh, the focal distance, how how I play with it. So this is the camera here, um, again, you can, I don't know if you can read it, but it's just the XS model. It uses a mini USB, I think it's called, but it's the one that like GoPro uses. It's the one that your cell phone doesn't use, unfortunately, but whatever. But there's just three screws, so you take the screws out. And on this particular model, the back, is actually a heat sink, so you can't um, you can't mess with it too much while it's on. Although I did have it apart and I was tweaking it while it was on, but again, you have to be careful. So if you peel off the back here, you notice that it's sticking. So they so what I did is actually grabbed the USB port, which is on the PCB board, and I do it do it with this pointed down because this uh, the glass cover here over the lens is actually f just floating in there it's just pinned so I flipped it upside down 
pulled on my USB port, the glass is inside of that, and then here is the camera mechanism, the board, and the attached, uh, you know, whatever that thing is, transistor, power supply, voltage regulator, who knows what it is, but it's a pretty awesome and small package, and the quality is pretty decent, so what you can see on here is this box is the autofocus, so there's a little coil with a, um, so there's a wound set of coils in there and then the, a ferrous sort of cage around the lens and as you can see if you, if you poke it, it kind of floats around in there. So then to adjust it, all you have to do is take a pair of tweezers or I'm sure that there's some kind of tool out there, but just take that lens and screw it in or out. So I did, I started out with a quarter turn or so. At a time, but it ended up being almost a couple full turns to get the focal distance down from 100 millimeters. So again, the farther you go from the factory set point, the more distortion you're gonna have because the lens is not designed to correct for such short focal distances. So I just wanna tweak this just a little bit to kinda of get back into a usable range. And I'm gonna put it back together. Got it tightened up. I'm gonna pinch it to my micrometer stage. I'm gonna kind of align where I need to be, get a coarse adjustment. And then I'm gonna turn my micrometer screw to get the best focal point I can. And on the software, you can zoom in to the center, it's pretty nice. And uh, pick my, I'm gonna pick the ideal focal point at the center of the image. So here we're, we're kind of looking at the screen. Here's the camera, right? It's kind of showing on the screen what's going on. Um, and then, you know, when I put it up close to the setup, I can, I can see the board, um, you know, right on the screen and see how much distortion there is and things like that. So this camera, they call it micro eye cockpit. It's pretty cool. They actually have um, a bunch of different features, but what's really nice, and uh, Microsoft webcams are the same way. You can actually adjust where the focal plane lies manually or you can do autofocus and again it's really cool you can actually pick your targets move it around chain play with the sizes you could uh, have different weights for the different cells it's actually really really nice software package just I mean and I had it up and running in like less than a couple minutes so it worked out well for me but the images that I ended up taking or collecting kind of to show you a little bit. I mean, I was just goofing around with the caliper here and you could see my ugly mug staring at my nose, but you could see on the caliper where the focal plane lies just on, on, the, on the numbers here. And they're backwards because it ends, it's a six inch caliper, so there's nothing here. So uh, obviously from the difference of these two images, you could see the focal distance is up between four and five, and then here it's somewhere between five and six. And then I switched to um, doing the board. So this is the closest that I got from the back of the camera to the face of this grid plate or the PCB. The whole spacing on here is 0.1 inches square, but you could see here like this is in reasonably are reasonably focused but out on the peripheral it's not and you could also see that this the the camera kind of cropped right or the sensor ended we'll just say right it imaged through almost the center of this but out here we're getting more and more of the circle so you could see that the focal plane here actually kind of lies 
in a in an arc, right? So it's distorting this. So so it's like the fisheye. We're we're bending this up and down, and you can see that the focal plane here is focused, and then as you get away from the edges, it's not. So. This is, again, with 1.5 inches, I think we have a little bit more room with that in the setup. So I did it again with 2.5, and this was with the focusing optic all the way towards the sensor. Okay, so this is pretty much the worst case scenario. So again, focused, less focused, but there's less distortion. And what's interesting, you notice, is that it's the opposite way. Right, so depending on where the focusing um, the lens is you're going to get different distortions so if you're going to use this as a calibrated sort of measuring tool you cannot use the autofocus or you need to report where the lens was when that image was taken so this image here is at three inches so that's about 75 millimeters again from the back of the camera to the front of the part you could see it's pretty well focused all throughout. So, you know, and the camera was a little bit tipped, but from the center all the way to here, it's pretty much in focus. The uh, field of view is about one inch by an inch and a half, I think this PCB board is. Again, that's 25 millimeters by, uh, I guess, what? 35 or something like that 25 by 35 again each of these spacing so this is a standard PCB prototyping board and I think they're 0.1 inches which would be what 2.5 millimeter spacing between them so but anyway so I think this is a pretty good compromise we have 75 millimeters or 3 inch from the back of the camera to the part and distortion is pretty well minimized and our focal plane if we got the camera aligned right would be pretty well across the field of view.